is here. The EV-1 from General Motors. The impact prototype became the EV-1, the first modern electric production car from a major U.S. car company in nearly a century. GM chose its Saturn division to market it in California and Arizona. I bought my first Saturn at 17, and they said, do you want to come work here? And so I thought, OK, it would be a good college job. I'll put myself through college this way. And turned out I loved the cars more than I loved what I was studying in college. And three years later, they announced the EV1 program, and I jumped on it. There were the 13 of us, most of whom were mid-20s, unattached, single, no kids, willing to do anything for little money. <laughs> we all handled a particular geographic region. Mine started as LA, and, and I worked with everybody from engineers and students to celebrities. I, say, I, say, I, say I have a picture of myself just hearing this Saturn song and just being so happy. I had one of those early EV ones, and I used it here in the Capitol. I love the car. It's sort of like everything Americans want in a car. It, they're cool, they're fast, they're sexy. I mean, I got in the car and I felt like, ooh. It was fairly reasonably priced. It was between $250 and $500 a month. I haven't tried accelerating too much because there's too many cops around. I'm afraid I'll get a ticket. I'll be too excited. Believe it or not, that sucker goes. That really? thing will take you down the PCH so fast you can get a ticket. I did kind of feel like Batman, you know, that sort of like Wee! And the way it takes off out of the cave. You know, I have this gate that opens and you go You get inside and the console is really near you and the lighting is beautiful. It was quiet. The car was so fast, it looked like it would outrun its own shadow. Oh, it was an awesome car to drive. It was the, the crest of a wave that we thought was coming in. It was the new thing that was going to, you know, change the way everybody travels. Other car companies began to comply, often with conversions of gas cars, but with many of the same advantages of the EV1. I'm not mechanical at all, and I love dealing with my electric car because it's so easy. I plug it in at night. And when I need to drive it, I unplug, drive it away. They're for people who love the environment. I, I said they're just for people who love cars. They're for people who have to go somewhere. So, well, this is amazing. What you do is with this electric car, Dave, you put the key in mm -hmm. and you turn it. Wow. And then there's this thing on the floor called the pedal, a pedal. The exciting thing about this is the cost of operating the car is the same as if you were driving a typical gasoline car, but the gasoline only costs 60 cents a gallon. Going to the gas station is a hassle, believe it or not. Plugging a car in is not. The battery that you charge at home, it uh, gets about between 70 and 80 miles per charge, which for me is more than all the driving that I need to do in the course of a day. People started seeing the cars on the road and getting a better understanding of what they could do. Friends and neighbors and relatives started saying, hey, that's a neat idea, you know? I should get one of those. And we started seeing the momentum building for this and the waiting lists being created for these cars. Cut to. Cut to, I go online to look for other Toyota RAV4s, and I see Toyota RAV4 EV. And I said, what's that? Click. Wow, my whole world opened up. It's this electric vehicle. It goes, you know, 100 miles to a charge, blah, 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 blah. It's just like, I didn't know this existed. I, I didn't know this was a possibility. H how come I don't know about this? Have you seen this on TV? When I first tried to buy the Honda EV Plus, I drove in and I said, hey, this is a great car. I said, I'll take it. it the, the, the person who was trying to sell it to us was dumbfounded. He didn't know what to do. He had never, never leased one before, didn't know how to do it, and it took me six weeks of negotiations before I was able to get the car from their hands. There's nothing like driving a car where you realize you're, as you're sitting in traffic, there's, there's no pollution coming out of your tailpipe. There's, you're just sitting there with batteries out. By car. driving an electric car, what are you sparing us from? I'm saving America, Dave. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I am saving America uh, by driving an electric car. Not everyone was sure that electric cars would save America. Even as GM rolled out its first batch of EV1s, there were skeptics. 
consumer acceptance and understanding has been a key issue in all of this. Um, and what we've discovered is that people are very cautious about the electric car. I would consider it, but I, I don't know. I haven't done enough research, and I don't know if they're, like, I don't know if they're big enough, if they're going to be strong and big and dependable. I have to know where I can go to, like, recharge it, or how do, what do I got to do for the battery. People don't want a mini, tiny car that has 15-inch wheels on there. How is he going to fix that up and go around the town and parade it? While some consumers express skepticism about electric cars, California was pressured to drop the mandate. A group called Californians Against Utility Company Abuse fought a small utility surcharge to build charging stations. And they would go to local city council meetings and say, you don't want to put in an electric vehicle charging station there. That's a waste of, of taxpayer money. They had this list of supporters. You know, companies like Trader Joe's and others, which you'd say, like, why would they support something like this? So the EV drivers actually got together and started writing letters to some of these people that were listed on their website as being supporters and said, do you realize what you're supporting here? And they, and they got all these names removed from the list. Further investigation revealed that these groups were consumer organizations in name only, funded almost exclusively by the oil industry. Oil companies also paid for editorials in national publications. They even argued that the environmental benefits of EVs were dubious. With electric vehicles, we're going to have to shift our energy away from oil. And if we shift it to coal, there are some environmental problems that are just very disconcerting. Right now in the United States, we're 55% coal. If you run the numbers with standard coal power plants, you don't end up with a better environmental performance. You end up with a longer tailpipe. Well, there have been numerous studies conducted by the California Energy Commission that clearly show that electric drive is substantially more efficient and substantially less polluting, even if you get your electricity from coal-fired plants. But the arguments against electrics did not stop there. They even made the ridiculous argument that there was an environmental justice issue involved because they said only rich people could buy electric cars. Well, the air doesn't know a boundary between Brentwood and South LA. Car companies began to argue that the mandate was too strict. We, we had to help with the regulations. The regulatory people knew nothing about this stuff. And we began to get the eerie feeling that we were going over a cliff. It wasn't going to be possible. California was faced with the prospect of what do you do if the car companies don't comply? And so rather than you know, do brinksmanship about what would happen if they didn't comply and stick with it, they started negotiating um, you know, certain flexibility in the mandate. California compromised with the automakers, adopting a memorandum of agreement. One of the agreements with the state was that the automakers would build and market electric vehicles in accordance with demand. If they didn't want to build more of them, the car companies would have to make the case that there was no demand. The person will go unnamed, but we were having a, a lunch in the executive dining room at the uh, GM Tech Center one day. And just the two of us, and he leans over to me and he says, Dobbles, you know something? You're my worst enemy. And I said, why is that? And he said, well, I'm out there lobbying to show that there's no demand for electric vehicles, and you're out there proving me wrong. We would sit down with Hal Reine or with executives from GM and make, you know, how far, how fast, how much? These are the three questions we're getting. Please put it in the advertising. It's not rocket science. And they would go back and do the exact opposite. You know, we never saw a TV ad with an electric car scampering up the side of a hill with a good-looking man or woman draped around it. That's the way they sell cars. 